what we say to ourselves matters, right? Like mm-hmm. we, we listen to ourselves and we're counting it as evidence, right? Mm-hmm. And so being able to notice, okay, how can I shift my thinking around this? Or how can I reframe this to support myself? And I think as like, as a business owner myself, it's you, like, you're your job, right? And so it's like, you you want to push yourself, you want to like, get things done. Um, you want to hold yourself accountable, but how can you do that in a way that's like healthy and supportive? Welcome to the Designers Oasis podcast. I'm your host, Kate Bendewald, interior designer, mama, and CEO of a thriving interior design business built on authentic word of mouth referrals. It wasn't that long ago that I stepped away from my corporate architecture job to build my own dream, one that would allow me more time with the people that I love, the ability to serve my clients at the highest level, and to make a great living. It wasn't always easy, and I've made my share of mistakes along the way. Fast forward to today, and I've learned a thing or two. This podcast is for you, the inspired, creative, ambitious, and let's admit it, occasionally overwhelmed interior designer who shares this dream of transforming lives by transforming homes. Join me and my guest each week as we walk through practical ways to build an interior design business you love and helps you transform your clients' lives. You can do this. Thank you for letting me spend part of this day with you. Let's get to it. Today, we are continuing to shine a light on Mental Health Awareness Month. A few weeks ago, we had Christy Taylor on the show. That's episode 42, if you want to go back and listen. And she mentioned that she had an ADHD coach. Having ADD myself, I was so interested to learn more. And so I reached out to Sarah and invited her on the show. Today, my guest is Sarah Lovell. She's an executive function and ADHD coach who helps busy professional women to plan, prioritize, and create management systems that actually work for the way their brains work so that they can stay on task and focus on their day-to-day life. She helps her clients learn about themselves, create realistic plans, and use sustainable strategies to reach their professional, personal, and self-care goals. The truth is, even if you don't have ADD or ADHD, we all need our executive functioning skills to be optimized in order to be successful interior design business owners. So whether it's keeping your projects on budget, meaning not going down rabbit holes when it comes to sourcing, uh, or learning how to work with procrastination in a healthy way, we've all got something to learn here. I believe every business owner will find today's episode not only incredibly practical with tools and strategies to help you in day-to-day life, but also just to put some perspective and to normalize behaviors like procrastination and overwhelm, because we're all going to feel that from time to time. So I'm so grateful to have Sarah here. Please welcome her to the show. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Hi, Kate. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh my gosh, I am absolutely thrilled to have you. Um, So uh, Sarah Lovell is with Executive Functioning First. I had a hard time typing that word earlier, and now I'm not going to be able to say it. Executive Functioning First. And you are a coach that helps um, business owners with executive functioning uh, and ADD, or excuse me, ADHD coaching. So I'm, I'm just going to say right off the top, I, uh, I do have ADD. I have, uh, I was diagnosed when I was in the seventh grade. And um, so when I first learned about you through one of our past guests, Christy Taylor, I was like, what, there's an ADD, ADHD coach, I want to, I want to learn more. Um, so we reached out and I'm so glad to learn more from you today. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. It's um, the majority of my clients right now are women who are running their own businesses. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really amazing to be able to connect with another business owner um, and to talk about executive functioning and how it impacts everybody's day to day life. Yeah, I want I want to start by 
getting clear on a couple of things. One, you coach people who have ADD or ADHD, but also people who don't, but who still Mm -hmm. need assistance with figuring out that executive functioning piece, Um, which I want to say is everybody, but (laughs) maybe not everybody knows it. So why don't you first start by explaining what is executive functioning and how does it show up in our daily lives? Yeah. So executive functioning is kind of like a buzzword that we've Mm. been hearing more of recently. Um, And basically executive functioning is a cognitive process, right? It's a mental process that we need every single day to plan, organize, prioritize, manage our time, start tasks, follow through on tasks, problem solve, Basically, it's those skills that we use every single day to manage all aspects of our life. Um, And so everybody needs executive functioning skills. Um, And some people experience more challenges with their executive functioning or finding strategies that work for them. Um, Mm -hmm. Because most of us were given the same set of strategies to use through school, right? Use a calendar, write a to-do list, and that's how you organize your day. Um, And that doesn't work for everybody. Um, And so that's where executive function coaching can come in. Um, And so I do work with people who may experience more significant challenges with their executive functioning, whether that's related to ADHD or another diagnosis, Um, but many of my clients also don't identify with a diagnosis, but Mm -hmm. have found, you know, procrastination, analysis, paralysis, um, decision fatigue, managing busy work lives with taking care of kids and their own self care, just trying to find like systems to manage all of that. Um, so that's, that's who I work with. That's how I, that's how I work with people. And executive function coaching is like this magical job that when people find out I exist (laughs) and that other executive function coaches exist, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that there was a name for the challenge I was having having, Mm -hmm. or a person who could talk with me and figure out systems that work for me. Yeah. So interesting because it, it makes sense to me that a lot of these things can be, I believe strongly in the power of habit and, um, I will say I'm one of those people who I do have ADD. I don't, I don't feel like I have ADHD um, anymore. That, that was my original diagnosis as a, as a young child. <laughs> but now that I'm in my forties, the hyperactivity piece is just kind of, it's more like needs a nap at four o'clock every day. But um, people who, you know, it's weird because I consider myself to be a very organized person. Um, I do, I am really good at starting projects. Um, I definitely need to, you know, systems to keep focused through the duration of projects. Um, I am a sprinter, not a long distance runner when it comes to projects and, Mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. But, um, always, 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 um, there's, there's a couple of things that I struggle with specifically in these executive functioning skills that you talk about. One is um, staying focused on, on like a day to day. And so I have to like create this whole environment for myself. Um, and I still think it could be improved to really minimize distractions, the dings, the alerts, having set aside times for, for certain activities. And yet there are still these, you know, these days where I just look at the clock and I'm like, how is it one o'clock? I feel like I am just getting started, you know? And so mm-hmm. there are days where just, it depends on a lot. It depends on my quality of sleep. It depends on how I got my morning started. It depends on what all is going on. Of course, you know, personal life, if I've got all the mumble jumble going in the back of my head, there are some days where I feel just totally depleted at the beginning of the day. And I'm just like, well, we're just going to, we're going to do our best today. And then there are other days where I'm like ready to go. I'm at my A game. And so I'm trying to be better at paying attention to what those, what that looks like and come up with systems. But I wanted to hear from you because I wanted, I wanted to find out when you work with somebody, where do you start with them to, in order to help them sort of come up with a game plan? How, what does that process look like for you? Yeah, it's so different for each of my clients um, because oftentimes people are coming with 
specific goals that they're wanting to work on. Um, so my, my coaching practice is basically meeting people where they're at. Um, mm-hmm. And that's part of my background is, is in social work. I have a master's degree in social work. So that mental health piece is, is in my background. Um, but basically like asking people what brought them to coaching, what are their big picture goals? Cause oftentimes we think about things at the thinking about the outcome, right? Like, what is that going to look like? What is that going to feel like? How is that going to change my life? But it can be really hard to actually get started on something when we're so focused on that outcome, because the outcome doesn't help us figure out the starting point much of the time. Um, So really taking their big picture goals and breaking them down into like small, realistic steps. Um, Because to your point, like life pops up Every day looks different. Our energy fluctuates. Our cha- our plans change. Um, you know, things things pop up or get in the way, and we have to be able to like go with the flow around that. So, being mm-hmm. able to come up with systems that work for them, where they can create that like Goldilocks effect of structure and flexibility, um, because I think a lot of times we benefit from having structure structure but we push up against it right like we don't want too much structure but if we have too much flexibility it's really hard to like get started um so finding like that right balance of of structure and flexibility is really important and that looks different person to person um so yeah so basically looking at like what what is it that brought them to coaching and what what are the steps that are going to help them get there in a realistic way? Like I'm not a honeymoon style of coaching where it's like, we're going to change your life in a week. Um, You know, it'll (laughs) right. Like people come in, I think sometimes and they're like, I want to like make these big drastic changes or I want to have a new routine or have new systems. But if, if you can do it in that short period of time, like that's great, but can you make that sustainable? where it's like, this is a, a change for you. That's, that's long lasting and like making a change for you every day. Um, yeah. so yeah. So can you give me some examples of some specific, either like tools or systems that you might help somebody, let's say for me, for example, the distractibility piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think this is true for a lot of women that just, well, I don't want to generalize men, but I'm going to generalize my man, my husband. <laughs> he is such a one track mind. Like he can sit down and he can, he focuses on work in like the, there could be a tornado happening around him and he would just mm-hmm. be oblivious. He's just so zoned in. And I think that women, especially women who are caretaking for anybody, whether it's children an aging parent, their community, their, their commitments, their tend to be beyond just themselves. And um, it can be hard to compartmentalize that, I think, and um, being able to sort of tune some of those things out um, when they sit down to work, right? And Mm -hmm. so the distractibility piece, whether you have ADD, ADHD or not, is really understandable from my perspective. Um, So what would be some examples of some tools that you might help somebody develop specifically related to distractibility and staying um, focused? Because I'll just, before, before I wrap up my question, the reason why this is so important is because, you know, the work that we do, um, you know, we're, we do project-based work and we usually send out proposals um, that even if we're not charging hourly, we're still basing our proposals on a set amount of time, right? So we, we allocate a certain number of hours, for example, to a project. Mm. And our profitability depends on our ability to map out what needs to happen, get it done, and to stay focused while still also creating space to be creative and, and time to play and time to explore, right? We don't want to stifle that. And so I think there's this balance that can be hard to find. But, uh, but that is a big um, thing that I hear a lot from my audience is going way over on hours um, on projects. So help, help, help us kind of think through that a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I'll start with the word balance, because I think that that that's such an interesting one, because we talk about like a work life balance. Um, and I think like, 
when we think of that, we picture a scale, right? Like we picture that everything is, is in balance. Everything is 50, 50. When in reality, what you're describing and what real life is, is that if something requires more time and energy, time and energy needs to decrease somewhere else. Um, and that's like the, the, the balance that I think can be really hard to navigate and to accept. Um, mm -hmm. And so not wanting to, you know, say that you, you shouldn't be giving your time and energy to these other things, but you only have so much time and energy every day or every week, right? And so being able to not have it be an all or nothing situation where it's like all of your energy is going into work, none of your energy is going into your own self care or taking care of your family or other people in your community or your circles. Um, but recognizing that like when time and energy increases for a particular project, that it has to go down or shift in another area, while not letting that plate completely drop, right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So one of the strategies that that I talk about with clients, and again, it's so individualized, because there's no sure. one size fits all strategy, right? Like, I would never come yeah. out and say, like, this is the one thing. Um, yeah, that, no, and I appreciate that. That is, <laughs> yeah. that, is, that is like my mantra. It's the first line you see on my website is, I don't believe in a one size fits all approach to how you run your business. So I am very grateful for, you know, sharing the toolkit, and then people yeah. can decide what's going to fit best for their life. But yeah, go ahead and share some of those. Yeah. Those ideas. So, so a, a general one that I talk about with clients all the time is basically having external systems. And what I mean by that is, we all keep track of a million things in our head every single day, right? You're keeping track of everything for yourself. You're keeping track of your clients projects. You're keeping track of being in touch with contractors. You're keeping track of if you have kids, their homework, pets, what's for dinner tonight. What are we doing this weekend? All of those thoughts are constantly there and we're pinpointing what is the thing that I need to focus on right now while everything else is still like going on in the background. And so I talk about externalizing all of that. Um, mm -hmm. So behind me, I know this is a podcast, but behind me, I have all of my sticky notes to the left of me, I have whiteboards, I have electronic systems. So those are things that personally are helpful for me to have multiple options of ways to take the things that are in my head and organize them outside of my head so that I know that I'm not going to lose track of my individual projects or my to-do list or all of those things that are in all the different areas of my life. So mm -hmm. I'm a huge proponent for visual systems and external yes. systems. So as a coach, I help clients figure out what that system is going to be for them um, by asking lots and lots of questions mm -hmm. because you know you best, right? So I can come with ideas of like colorful sticky notes or a whiteboard with magnets that you can move. Um, but oftentimes when I ask clients a series of questions and really get them talking, they're able to come up with an idea of a system that they feel ownership over, they feel excited about, and then they're more likely to actually connect with that system versus if I were to say, I personally use a whiteboard. Have you thought about using a whiteboard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think like it's, it's super individualized, but like a, a very common way that I approach it is figuring out like, how can you take everything that's in your head right now and get it out so that you can feel confident that you're not going to lose track of all of the different things that you're keeping track of. Um, so we're talking about yes. a brain dump, right? Okay. So yeah. How and how often? I mean, it seems like as often as needed. I know. I feel like I do a brain dump every day on my mm -hmm. notebooks. But yeah. um, yeah. Do you have so when it comes to putting pen to paper? Uh, let's say for me, I'm a notebook person. Um, do you have certain suggestions for how to organize that information on paper that? Um, Again, I realize could be useful for some and not for others, but ha to me, sometimes creating the hierarchy of what's important gets in the way of getting it down on paper. And so I <laughs> organize yeah. what's on the paper. How, what do you suggest there? Yeah. So I think, again, there's no one right way, but I think for a lot of people, like perfectionism can pop up with 
trying to get things out, right? Like we want the first version to be the right version or the beautiful version. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I always talk about like messy first steps or messy action. Um, And so a brain dump can be that first draft of like, I'm going to get all of my ideas out and then I'm going to organize them. Um, Alternatively, I've talked with some clients where they, their brain dumps are by categories So Mm -hmm. I call them like menus or buckets. Mm -hmm. Um, So like a menu or a bucket would be a different project that they're working on, right? So it might be like project one, project two, project three, and then you're brain dumping under each of those um, and updating as needed. Um, But I also talk with clients about like creating lists or brain dumps or visual systems that acknowledge changes in your energy And when things change during the day, Um, because as you talked about, like things pop up, your plan changes, you get taken from one project to manage another project. And so how do you come back and make sure that you know where you left off on project one when you're brought over to project two? Um, Yeah, so that's one, like one strategy that we've talked about with that I've talked about with clients is like having different lists for one for your energy, right? So it could be like, today, I'm in a creative mood. So I have a creative list of projects that I can do or today, I'm not in a creative mood. So I'm going to be working on my admin list. Um, So creating like different types of options for yourself, which again, is that like, structure piece of I have Mm -hmm. an external system that I'm looking at. But then you have the flexibility piece of where is my energy at today? Like what what do I want to start with? Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's, it's funny to hear you say that out loud, because in a way, I do that already for myself, imperfectly, of course. Um, but it's more like notice, like knowing my, the flow of the week and my habits. So I, so they talk about Sunday scaries, I don't get Sunday scaries, I get Monday scaries. So I have the ability to kind of check out during the weekend and just be with my kids, which I'm really grateful for that. But when I come back Monday and I sort of refocus, you know, everything that we're trying to accomplish and work on at a given time, when I see the list and I see all the things, there's a part of me that gets like anxiety and I get like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do, <laughs> you know? And, mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm really trying to work on getting better at recognizing, um, you know, shifting priorities and knowing what's, what's gonna, what's gonna um, need to come first. But the other thing is organizing my week. So I've realized that, um, you know, Mondays are just uh, like, it just takes me the full day to kind of get organized, check in with people. So I don't typically have meetings with people except for my team. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's been working. And then Tuesdays is a lot of writing and getting stuff done. And I feel good to kind of get that out of the way so that by the time Wednesday rolls around, I feel like, okay, I've gotten all the like tasky type stuff off the table. Um, Mm -hmm. I've, I've been in communication with people and they're working on their stuff. And so Wednesday really allows me to get into that creative flow um, Mm -hmm. where I, I don't have meetings, although I might do a podcast interview because to me, that's part of the creative process and content creation, but the, it feels good because I'm not, I'm no longer burdened with all of those tasks because I've already had some momentum on them. And I know that I have the rest of the week to check back in. So I really can use Wednesdays to kind of check out and do creative work, deep creative work, minimal distractions. I've usually got music going. I, you know, really, I love Wednesday. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so then that allows me to finish up the week by following up with people. But um, for sure, by Thursdays, um, my energy is just like, all right. And so I think it's, you make a good point to notice that energy and work with it and save some of those things that are gonna help you in your low energy times that you know you can can get done um during those times yeah and I think like for a lot of people like having those options ahead of time like already written out for yourself so that when a low energy day swings through or like when your energy dips in the afternoon and you're not able to maybe do the thing that you were planning on doing 
you already have your options written out for yourself. Um, Cause then you're like choosing from a menu versus like realizing, okay, my day is not going the way I thought it was going to go. And then feeling stuck. Cause I think that can be like for a lot of people, if our schedule, if our, our plan changes, it can be really hard to figure out what am I going to start on or what's going to like serve me best right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So kind of being able to like gift your future self options. And I would think that on that list would include stuff like not work related, like get off of the computer, go for a walk, go to the grocery store, you know, to me, like going to the grocery store, which I re- I almost rarely do because I do grocery pickup a lot, but, uh, or oh, here's the other one that I do. <laughs> I've talked to, I actually I talked about this with Christy on that episode, which is a really fun episode. And we'll be sure to link to it um, because uh, you, you work with Christy. She shared that with us on the episode. So I think it's fine to say that. Um, but one of my like brain breaks that I do, there's a really good goodwill over here and there's always these like crazy finds. And if I'm, you know, unless I'm in a, real steep deadline but if I'm just like hit a wall I can hop up go over to Goodwill for 30 minutes 20 minutes look around grab lunch and then come back and I feel like I'm not looking at a screen I'm completely shifting gears for a minute and it gives me this like I I rejuvenate again um if or I'll go to the grocery store and I'll get something for dinner which makes me feel productive um you know, like I, you know, Goodwill is not a productive feeling. I'm definitely just for the, for the love of looking around, but um, I would think that there could also be on this list of your toolkit things that are just not work related that allows you to just kind of check out for a moment. Is that also helpful? For sure. I self-care. So my whole like coaching philosophy is that self-care and self-talk is truly the foundation of our executive functioning. So Mm -hmm. we need self-care in order to plan, organize, prioritize, do all those things every single day for all areas of our life. But we also need um, those same skills in order to do self-care, right? Like self-care requires us to carve time out. It requires planning. And when I say Mm -hmm. self-care, I think we all have a different image in our head of like, (laughs) <laughs> what that might be, right? Like the yes. bubble bath, right? Uh-huh. Bubble bath, or like going to Goodwill is self care. Um, like yes. that counts. That is so productive. Kate, so I want to reframe. Answer. I want to reframe that. That that is that is productive. That is rejuvenating for you, re-energizing for you. Yeah. Self care is also like setting boundaries with ourselves, mm-hmm. with others, with our work. If you're self employed, setting boundaries is so hard, and like that is self care. Um, self-care is asking for help when you need it, um, Mm -hmm. which being self-employed, I I can say like, it is hard to sometimes Mm -hmm. say like, I don't know how to do this in my business. Who can I ask for help? Um, so I think like for me, it's like, it's that circle of like, we need self-care to, to do all the things that we do every day with our planning, organizing, prioritizing. Mm -hmm. We also need to have systems in order to be able to do the self-care. Um, so, so yeah, I'm a huge proponent again of like externalizing self-care, um, like having a list of options because something that I talk about with clients all the time is like this feeling of limbo where, you know, you should, and I put should in air quotes, you should be doing something for work or your Mm -hmm. chores or something Mm -hmm. that you're like putting off, feeling stuck on, procrastinating on, but like, I should be doing that. But at the same time, maybe you're not resting or doing something that would like support that, like taking a break, you know, going for a walk, doing something for you. Instead, you're stuck in this like limbo mode of I'm not doing the thing and I'm also not relaxing. So I'm stressed about both things. Yeah. Um, And I think like that's a really common experience of like feeling stuck. And so if you have a list of like, what are some things that I can do for five minutes that help me, you know, feel grounded, recenter, whatever word, rest, re-energize, like having that list can be really helpful, whether it's written down or on your phone or just like a visual reminder of like your sneakers in front of your office door to like go for a walk.
Hey designer, are you tired of wasting precious time with prospective clients who are not a right fit? Do you experience imposter syndrome because you know the back end of your business is kind of a hot mess? Perhaps you're experiencing growing pains and you don't have the tools, resources, or team to support you. I get it. I've been there. As an ambitious interior design business owner myself, I know the roller coaster ride this can be. Over the years, I've learned a thing or two about running a profitable word of mouth design business, and I want to help you find success too. How would it feel to wake up and face the day knowing exactly what to focus on next, having a roster of enthusiastic clients, including a paid wait list, and having the space, time, and creative energy to develop projects that you are proud of and are portfolio, if not press worthy? I want to invite you to learn more about the Interior Designers Business Blueprint, a business coaching program designed exclusively for interior designers who want to serve their clients at the highest level while making good money, but without the burnout and overwhelm. If you're ready to get off the roller coaster, you don't have to do it alone. Join me inside the Interior Designers Business Blueprint and get the tools, teaching, and community you need to pave the way for an interior design business your clients love and you are proud of. To learn more, grab the link on your audio player or head to designersoasis.com forward slash blueprint. That's designersoasis.com forward slash blueprint. I realized that context switching is a big part of that mental fatigue for me. Yeah. So that's, it's good to know that, you know, if, you know, that I, if I, I think it would be helpful personally to create a list of like, okay, things that I can do to sort of get me back into focus. This actually happened yesterday. I, and I realized that I, so I've been cranking out a bunch of podcast episodes because we're getting ready to take a trip. So we just scheduled a bunch of them. And I love, 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 love doing this with people. But also at the end, I feel a little bit wiped. I'm I'm an ambivert. <laughs> so um, mm -hmm. what happened yesterday was, you know, the plan was to do the episodes and then I was going to go sit down and write some writing that needs to happen for, for the business. And I just could not get my act together. And there was this self-talk that started to happen. And it was just like, you're pushing this deadline back. You're never going to have it done. You're going to have to work on vacation, uh, get it together, you know? And then I was like, you know what? Screw that. And, you know, I wrote one email just to get something done. And then I said, that's enough. I will find time to do this. And I have, I've already dedicated another slot of time, but I had to move some stuff around. Yeah. And so the point is, it was like this, I became aware of my thoughts and I became aware of the self-sabotaging um, language that I had. And I was, and all of a sudden I was like, whoa, just chill. Like, it's okay. It's fine. And then I just shut down my laptop. I lit all the candles in the house. I turned on some good music. I, my kids were being wild. And had I tried to continue to do that work while my kids were being kids, I would have just gotten mad at them. And I would have just been like, I'm trying to work, get this done. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And instead I was like, you know, I just go with the flow. Like, this is just what's happening. This is your life right now. And you'll figure it out. And now I feel like when I do sit down to do that writing, it's going to be so much better because I wasn't forcing it. And then for me, that was a big growth moment. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and that's it, what I'm hearing there is like, you gave yourself the permission to do what was going to be best for you in that moment. Like what was going to like be the best choice for you in that moment, instead of getting stuck in the limbo of like, I should be writing, I should be getting this work done. Right. I should just push through. And to your point, like it wouldn't have been helpful to, mm -hmm. to kind of force yourself to do that work when you weren't in that, that right headspace or the right energy and so to be able to say, I'm going to shift and take care of myself so that I can do the work at a later time and it's going to be better quality and I'm going to feel better about it and like support myself. That's exactly what I talk about with clients all the time, like that permission giving <laughs> and yeah. the self, the self noticing the self talk. Cause it's like, well, that's what we say to ourselves matters, right? Like mm -hmm. we, we listen to ourselves and we're, counting it as evidence, right? Mm -hmm. And so being able to notice, okay, 
how can I shift my thinking around this or how can I reframe this to support myself? And I think as like, as a business owner myself, it's you, like you're your job. Right. And so it's like, you, you want to push yourself. You want to like get things done. Um, you want to hold yourself accountable, but how can you do that in a way that's like healthy and supportive? Right. And gentle and just acknowledging yeah. like you have, you have a lot, you have a lot on your plate and sometimes you just need to take a step back in order to regroup and just have that minute. That's why the Pomodoro method is so popular because it gives your brain that intense focus with a break built in. And so that's, again, that's another, and I, I honestly have found that that didn't work for me because it was about 45 minutes where I'd be like, no, I'm in the flow. If I stop now, right. I break my, my train of thought, but there's a lot of people who swear by it. And for those of you listening, if you're not familiar, the, the Pomodoro method is, uh, is it 45 minutes and then 15 or something like that? Or 40, there's 20? another one too, where it's like 20 minutes or 25 minutes of work, five minute break, and then a longer sure. version too. So the yeah. idea is that you're doing a, a, a focused sprint on one specific thing and nothing is allowed to break your concentration. You just stay in the zone, do it, whatever it is for 45 minutes or 25 minutes and there's Pomodoro timers and there are people who this really, really works for. So if that sounds like you, you might want to try it out. And then you stop and you give yourself a break, you get off the screen. For me, I go, go water my plants or play with my dogs or just go look yeah. at the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Getting off the screen is a really important piece for me. Um, and that allows your brain to just kind of like take a break and then come back to it. Um, but I take, I found that that didn't work as well for me because it's, it's about that time where I start to hit my stride and I, it takes me that long to get into deep focus. And so I don't like to, if I'm there, I'm just like, why would I stop what I'm doing now? I'm in, I'm here. Right. So yeah, I, I love, I love the idea of having tools. I want to go back to something you said earlier though. Um, when I said, I, I was asking you about, you know, prioritizing and, and, you know, how, how to, you know, it can be so hard to prioritize when mm -hmm. everything feels equally weighted. And one of the things you said was, you know, you're going to have to pull some things off of your plate. And so it, it seems like if we're thinking about what that could be, you know, a lot of the people that are listening might be a one man show, right? Or maybe they have a small team of one or two, and they're, they're just about in that growth period. So that's like hiring for work. But it seems like, it could also look like having paying for somebody to do your laundry or having your groceries delivered or um, having somebody. Oh my gosh. I feel like I need to hire somebody on Thursdays because the carpool shuffle on Thursdays is like, there's a pickup and drop off at three thirty, four thirty, five thirty, and six thirty. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, cause I just pay somebody to take my kids to where they need to go. But you know what? The truth is I, I would, I would encourage people listening to think about your own community and who's there because for me on those Thursdays, there's a group of, of parents who we look out for each other and we pick each other's kids up and drop them off and we're all on speed mm -hmm. dial. And so that could be one way that you pull some things off your plate is to ask for help and say, can you pick up my kid from soccer practice or can my kid ride with your kid to theater or whatever the case may be? Yeah. Yeah. No, prioritizing, I think. House is one cleaning. Of the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing I ever invested in for myself was my robot vacuum. He's named Trent Krim, the independent for anyone who's watched Ted Lasso. Um, he's a wandering, amazing guy, the, the robot, my vacuum. Um, but yeah, no, prioritizing is really hard because everything often feels urgent or like the most important thing. Um, and so when that's the case, it's like I, like we were talking about, if something is taking more time and energy, that means you have less time and energy to give to other things. So mm -hmm. asking for help, right? Asking a partner, asking your community, asking a coworker, or if you have a small team, an assistant, asking for help or delegating help. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a skill to learn how to do that, like, and to practice that. Um, that's definitely a piece of that puzzle. Um, the other piece would be like, I, I talk about with clients all the time, like when everything feels like it's the most urgent thing, doing like a decision tree or doing like a series of questions for yourself to really pull out, like what is the highest priority? Um, 
And how can you give that a little bit more energy and then spread out other things? Um, So giving yourself more time for other projects or other things that are on your radar um, that are still high priority um, and that you don't want to have drop completely off, but giving yourself that space and grace to say, this is going to take a little bit longer. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that also can go back to like communication. So I know your, your audience um, are designers, you're working with a variety of different clients, right? So being able to like talk professionally and transparently um, about like realistic timelines, um, because I think that can be a hard thing in any profession to set. Um, Like, so looking at, am I setting something that's like ideal or am I setting something that's realistic? Um, Mm -hmm. And then being able to kind of have that conversation too around this is, this is how long something is going to take. Yes. Oh, this is so good. And you know what it's reminding me of? I I need to be better at this because I am one of those people that I make a, I make a brain dump oftentimes each day or like I make one at the beginning of the week and then it usually evolves over the week. But um, that is the number one thing that causes me stress and anxiety is not prioritizing that list. Um, Mm -hmm. I do better when I, and I have done this before and I think I just got out of the habit, but I used to create quadrants and the four corners were like, you know, project A, project B, personal, you know, admin stuff. And that alone was just such a simple thing to do. But Um, I was reminded too, we recently had Molly Crouch and I'll link to the show notes on this um, because we're, I don't think I mentioned this at the top, but just a reminder for our listeners, we're, we're focusing right now on mental health uh, for the month of May because it's mental health awareness month. And so Molly Crouch uh, came in and talked, she, she helps coach women um, related to, you know, building a business with more ease so that you can really find that balance. And so she has, she definitely has a, a cool, um, way that she talks about helping to prioritize because I feel like the biggest cause of overwhelm is a lack of clarity. And so that lack of clarity, um, it can happen. I know for me, if I don't take the time to organize that list or at least highlight or put a star by or whatever, like start here, um, that that is what leads to overwhelm. And so um, whatever you're working on, if you know, I, the, the, when I'm at, I'm thinking about the things that I do that when I'm at my best, right. When I'm having a a, a good week, you know, there's a couple of things that I do to help prioritize. And when I don't, you know, shit falls apart. (laughs) So I'll just say, I'm going to just share with the, with the audience. I I know this, we do have a YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on video, you can see this, but I have my paper calendar. I'm just going to talk about some of the tools and I will set and I will map out my week of what I have to do on the paper calendar. But then uh, what I do is on my Google calendar. So I've got my stuff like, for example, this week talking to you, I knew that we were going to be talking today on, on Friday. Um, But I knew that I needed to prepare for our conversation and doing some reading and researching and planning kind of the conversation. And so I gave myself an hour and a half to do that. And I actually have to put it on my calendar and say, on this date for an hour and a half, I'm going to dedicate to planning to talk to Sarah. So when I do that list, those, those top three priorities have to go on the calendar Um, because if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen for me at least. And I think that's Mm -hmm. one of the tools that, I find the most helpful. Otherwise it just gets put into the, you know, fringes of time. And then, and then I'm not doing my best work. I'm not doing my guest justice, right. By showing up unprepared or whatever. So that's a big help. Um, I got these, by the way, um, this, uh, where did I go for these? It was either target, but I want to say it was the container store has, I love office supplies. I have a love affair with office supplies, but I have this little, the people watching, it's a little to do post-it note and it says top three Mm -hmm. priorities. And every day I fill one of these out and it's my top three priorities for the day. That helps me to get prioritized because if I look at that big long list, it gets overwhelming. So I can keep this right in front of me and I know I can do that. And then the other thing I've talked about this a lot is the time timer. Oops, showing that here for this one video. Oh my gosh, yes. Sarah, I love you. So time timer is a visual timer 
um, <laughs> it, um, and this was really helpful, especially doing client work when you're sourcing. Uh, one of the things I hear from designers is when I'm sourcing for a client, I feel like I need to scour every end of the internet, like to the depths, you know, like, I feel like there's always something better on the next, you know, vendors website or whatever. And so they find themselves going down rabbit holes. And this is where they lose a lot of their profitability is maybe they set aside 25 or, or budgeted 25, 30 hours for sourcing. And here they are 40, 50 hours in, that is really a huge hit to your, your profitability. First of all, you need to be giving yourself the right amount of time. And that takes practice, right? You're just going to have to do more and more projects to understand how long it takes and to be able to budget mm -hmm. for that. So if you're early in the stages of, of you know, your interior design career, just know that you're going to go over on time eventually. But if you're really tracking your time and taking taking the time to track it, then you can get better at predicting your time. But once you've been at it for a little while, here's the thing that's been so helpful for me to keep from going on hours, using the visual timer. And I'll say, okay, I'm going to give myself 15 minutes to source lighting for the kitchen or an hour to source lighting for whatever, you know, and then I can just focus on lighting. And when the timer goes off, whatever I've pulled, I'm going to, I'm going to just leave it at that. And I'm going to move on to the next thing. And one of the things that almost always happens is either I end up loving, like going back to the very first thing I picked that, or let's say I move on and now I'm looking at fabrics or, or furnishings or whatever. I will inevitably come across something in my journey looking for something else. Or let's say I'm at a showroom, right? For example, you, the same could apply there. And I end up accidentally stumbling across something else that I love. But the point is giving myself a hard stop and just saying that's good enough um, has been a game changer for me and not going over time. But it has to be visual for me. And I know we're all visual people here. So I think mm -hmm. that's been a huge tool for me. What other you what are you, what else do you use the time timer for? Yeah, I'm a huge proponent of the time timer because yeah, we don't not everybody feels time, right? Time blindness is is That's real. <laughs> time blindness is real. Um so somebody like everybody experiences time differently and I could like nerd out talking about this forever, but yeah. briefly I'll just say like we all, like you said, you know, your husband, but like there, there are people in our lives who will say like, yeah, I'll be ready to leave in five minutes. And if we didn't go and tell them it's been 15 or 50, they might not know how much time has gone by, right? Like they don't feel time pass in the same way. And so being able to visualize time can be extremely helpful. So there is Kate and I held up, like we each have the, the actual like time timer that you can like and I'll, I'll, and I'll and link with you. I'll link to the show yeah. notes to the time timer from Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> there's also it, there's a free app download for iPhone and I'm I'm guessing Android too. The time timer app you can download it for free. Um, I recommend that to clients who are like wanting to try out a visual timer. Um, and I talk with clients who are trying to figure out how how long projects take them especially if it's projects like your audience where you're doing it repetitively over and over again with different clients mm -hmm. um having a system to track like how long do I think this will take if it's not something that you're putting a deadline on like how long do I think it'll take to I don't know do a rendering I I, I went to Endicott College so I'm like best friends with lots of interior designers so <laughs> I like you know the words I know the words I don't know what any of, any of them mean but um that works Chad. <laughs> yeah <laughs> love that I, yeah it was a long time ago but um but yeah no so like being able to like put an estimate on okay I think this is going to take 25 minutes timing yourself seeing how long it actually takes and then not being hard or judgmental or like tough on yourself if it takes way longer or way under but just viewing it as like I'm learning about this for myself like this is something new that I'm practicing um, but yeah, I'm a huge, I love the time timer. I love the visual timer. Um, I also really like auditory, like setting a, an alarm or a timer to keep track of time. Not everybody likes the 
that. But if you're somebody who wears like a, um, a watch, like an Apple watch or something, you can even set those just to vibrate. Um, so just to like help you feel the passage of time um, can be helpful. And then I was laughing when you were talking about making decisions because there was a research study that was done. I'm not going to remember all of the details on it, okay. um, but basically it was that when we're given too many choices, um, we get overwhelmed and we shut down and it becomes really hard to make a decision. Um, mm -hmm. And so they've found that when we have a like, specific amount that we're choosing from. So like, think about tomato sauce at like Shaw's or Hannaford, these are all New England stores versus like a Trader Joe's, right? Yeah. Trader Joe's only sells five tomato sauces. But if you go to your grocery store, there's like 50 of them, right? But it doesn't matter. It's going to take you longer to decide at the big grocery store than it is at Trader Joe's. But chances are the pasta sauce is going to be just as good for either. And you're not going to say, I wish I had picked one of the other 49 other pasta sauces. You know, I think this is why I used to love grocery shopping. And I think as I got older, I started to hate it. And I think this was even like pre-pandemic. I started to dislike it. Um but, and, and now that the, you know, order online is so, e so much easier, but at the top, like if I put in orange juice or whatever, it will show me the last orange juice that I bought and I can just do, add I do not have to rethink it over. It knows what I want. And it, I think unconsciously I'm realizing that that was allowing me to just get it done without having to, to think about it. I just did a video on, um, on decision making and mm -hmm. habits. And the point I was trying to make was in the same way that indecision can be a habit, right? We overthink everything mm -hmm. um, and we overanalyze everything. Decision making can also become a habit where um, it, it, you, you don't allow yourself to fall into the decision making trap about everything literally mm -hmm. everything and I did this the other day I was on a walk and I started in my brain I, I don't even know it was probably related to the renovation because we're we're renovating our home but I was in my head going back and forth it was like this mental chatter and all of a sudden I was just like stop it doesn't matter just you already made a decision there you do not need to bemoan this it is wasting your energy think about something else <laughs> And I, and I realized that was me because I've been actively trying to build a habit of thinking to myself, do I need to be mulling this over still or can I move on? Um, yeah. And, and I think that actively consciously it, it's, it has to be intentional um, intentionally thinking about, is this something that requires this much mental energy or can I just move on? And I, the more you're aware of it, I think the more you'll realize there's a lot that you could just let go and make a decision and move on with. Yeah. Well, we make so many decisions every single day and especially mm -hmm. business owners, like you're making all the decisions. Maybe you're bouncing the idea around with your team, mm -hmm. but like your, the amount of decisions that you make as a business owner is probably way more than you realize. And then if you mm -hmm. add in on top of that, a family, your own personal decisions, like so many decisions every single day and decision fatigue is real. Um, mm -hmm. So like you get into that of like people, my clients talk to me all the time about the fatigue of like, what's for dinner? Like, what am I going to cook for dinner tonight? Like, and cooking is a whole nother executive functioning thing, but, but like, it's something that we have to decide every single day. Right. Mm -hmm. And so being able to like take some decisions off of our plate again by externalizing writing down what are all of my options like having a running list of options so yeah. it's like I'm not trying to think of everything I've ever eaten or cooked or every place I've ever ordered from because mm -hmm. again going back like all those things that are swirling through our head every single day to be able to go and say I'm going to pull out this recipe book and I'm going to pick this recipe and feel good about that choice because that's what I have in the fridge yeah. Like yeah. narrowing it down in that way. And then going back to what you were just saying, the self-talk piece of like not ruminating on a decision. Like, was that the right decision? Should I go back and change it? 
how like am I feeling okay enough with this so Mm -hmm. like noticing that self-talk and like having something that you can just pull for yourself is like a reassurance like I made I made a choice I feel good with my choice Mm -hmm. the client is going to be happy like something that like you can just remind yourself quickly um and have it in your toolbox yeah I love that Oh, I'm just thinking of all of the way like that toolbox is just growing. And I just, I, you know, thinking of outsourcing, you know, we talked earlier about laundry, having someone take your kids for you asking for help, um, um, having groceries delivered, but the, the meal planning too. I mean, depending on where you are and in terms of some people cooking for them is one of the most relaxing things to do. And, and I, there are days where I feel that way and there are days where I just can't be bothered. But a couple of, you know, like meal planning kits, although I've tried a lot of them and (laughs) if not loved the outcome of what I got, but there was a period of time where it worked because it made me, I didn't have to think about what we were going to have. The stuff just showed up and we got it done. But, um, and there's another, um, downshiftology is a website. I'll link to this, the show notes. She does these really cool, um, meal planning and meal prep, uh, based on season. So you are eating seasonal foods and I love her stuff that you can print out because you just like prep a bunch of stuff at the beginning of the week. And then you just don't have to think about it. And you can mix and match those ingredients for all these different recipes that she provides. So there's all sorts of tools like that out there that can help you. Um, oh, and plan to eat. I'm just thinking about like a lot of our audiences mm. there, you know, a lot of times once they're also keeping everybody fed and happy in their lives. So Mm -hmm. if that is a point of stress for you, if it's causing, you know, taking up a lot of time, there's so many resources out there that can help kind of take some of that off your plate so that you, you can focus on the stuff that really lights you up and fills you up. And then one last thing, because I'm thinking Mm -hmm. about it, I see it on my, on my little tab up here. There is a plugin, uh, at least for Chrome called Clearly. And you know how you go to websites? So this distractibility piece for me is, is a, it's a big problem that I'm I'm getting better at though. Um, it's called Clearly. It's a plugin, and so if you go to a website and it has all these flashing like ads and blinking stuff and extra stuff like junking up your site, you can click the Clearly app and it removes everything but the text and the headlines, so you can read without the distractions of everything else blinking, and that is huge for me. That is amazing. I did not know about that one. That that's I'm going to start using that. So thank you. Clearly, yeah, we'll be sure we'll list out all of these in the show notes because I think, uh, like you said, you know, for some the executive functioning pieces, like organization, is something that I'm not terrible at. I'm actually really good at it. But there's other pieces like the distractibility um, mm-hmm. and feeling overwhelmed because it's hard to prioritize you know, those are aspects that are, are di- more difficult for me. So depending on where you fall and you, you know, there's a, there's a handful of um, categories within executive function that you meant, mentioned at the beginning. And mm-hmm. so it makes sense that people would need sort of a custom uh, menu of options to choose from, depending on their energy, depending on what it is that they're struggling with. And so hopefully some of these things that we talk about, talked about today can help people start to build that, that menu. Um, before we wrap up, I'd love for you just to share a little bit about how you work with your clients. So um, we'll be sure to link to your website, Executive Functioning First. Um, but would say, you know, I know you have a wait list right now. If somebody were to start working with you, what are the kinds of things that you could expect um, to gain working together with you, Sarah? Yeah. So I think for me, I always want clients to learn more about themselves. So like to be able to learn what their strengths are and to build on those strengths. Because I know today we talked a lot about some of the challenges that people experience with executive functioning. But as you just mentioned, Kate, like oftentimes there are lots of strengths there. And so being able to really bolster those strengths. Um, when I work with clients, I want them to leave coaching with like a set of very specific tools that work for them. Um, so whether that's related to time management, planning, organizing, oftentimes clients come with like very big goals or projects that they're trying to figure out how to break down, how to spread out over time. Um, 
So those are things that I work on like one-on-one with clients. And then in all of my coaching, we talk about self-care and self-talk and where that pops up um, every single day. Um, And so helping people navigate kind of the stress, the overwhelm, um, and the anxiety that can come with some of the challenges um, related to executive functioning. Um, So I work with clients one-on-one. I do currently have a wait list um, as a one-woman show. Um, It pains me to have a wait list. Um, but, um, but because I want to be able to work with people in a very, um, you know, just very one-on-one way, um, I, I only work with so many one-on-one clients at a time. Um, and then I also do small group coaching. So right now I'm launching my first cohort. Um, we start actually in May. Um, and so that's a group of eight women, Um, and we're going to be working together as a group, um, over the course of eight weeks. And that group is specific for women who either are running their own business, growing a side hustle, um, or working busy jobs and balancing like life on top of that. Um, Mm -hmm. so I'll be offering more group coaching again in the fall and in the future. Um, so But another way to connect with me is through Instagram. Um, I do quite a bit of posting on there um, and love connecting with people um, on Instagram as well. And that's at executive functioning first. I was just about to ask. Yes, I was actually peeking on there this week and you you actually provide some really great and helpful um, techniques and tools and resources right there within within your, your Instagram feed. So I always think that's that's helpful. Well, I just. Thank you so much. I feel um, a lot of validation <laughs> today listening to you because, uh, you know, it's it, it is true that there was a long time where there was there was a lot of shame that I carried around, um, you know, feeling inadequate that like I could never get as much accomplished in the week that that I set out or you know, and it's like compared to what, right? Compared to who? Who cares? <laughs> And so I feel like I finally, there, there was a period of time where I had made it my mission. I'm like, I'm going to get off of medication. I don't want to take medication anymore. And, and I did for a little while when I was pregnant, but um, I wasn't able, you know, to really get through my work. This again, this is me personally, I've been, you know, it's been, been diagnosed and I got so down on myself because I wasn't able to, even with all the systems and tools I created to to function at my best and feel good without that piece helping me out. And so I've sort of resigned myself to, you know, this is a small dose. It's healthy. It's safe. You're getting stuff done. Your mental health is better because of it. So I stopped mm-hmm. beating myself up over that and just said, you know what, just work with the systems that you have and who cares if it takes medicine to help you sort of get into that zone. What I love is knowing that I can take breaks I don't take it on the weekend. I don't take it during the holidays or on vacation. And um, and it's fine. And it is what it is. But I think that normalizing it and just bringing attention to it, um, ditching the shame is really an important conversation to have. And I'm, it's, you know, that's kind of why we're doing this here today. So you've, you've really been a great uh, resource to help us sort through some of this. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, Kate. Yeah, thank you for opening up the conversation around executive functioning and how it connects with our mental health and how it impacts truly everybody every single day. Um, But it is so important to like normalize and validate that some people experience significantly more challenges with it. And if if you're one of those people listening, like you're not alone. Um, And I think like that's that's something that I feel so fortunate to be able to do in my work is to help people learn about themselves and learn that, um, you know, maybe they've been using systems that don't work with their strengths or don't, don't fit for them. And so that's not, that's not a problem with them. That's, it's figuring out what works for you. Um, so yeah, I think it's an important conversation. All right. Well, you're doing some great work, Sarah. Um, we, we appreciate it very much. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a very helpful episode. Thanks for coming. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kate. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.
Thank you so much for letting me spend part of this day with you. If you're loving this podcast, please share it with a friend who you think might also love it. Or perhaps you can take just 30 seconds to open your podcast app and leave us a five-star rating. And if you have just an extra minute, go ahead and leave a review. This helps me so much and it helps other designers like you to find the podcast. It also adds fuel to my motivation to keep making great episodes just for you. However you choose to help, please know I appreciate you so very much. Thank you, my friend. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Hey.